Okay. Here we go, here we go, here we go with the post market review here for Tuesday, March 9th, 2021. Uh, quick review, we're going to start off here talking here on the S&P 500. Uh, taking a look at her action for the day. Uh, if you had listened in here in the early morning, I had basically said watch out as she was going to show a big opening move, but watch for the resistance levels. And sure enough, she could not break that R2, R2 pivot point here um, and sold off here near the end on a little bit of volume. But overall, a uh, pretty good day in the market. We had a uh, advanced decline count of basically 11 to 1 on the New York Exchange on NASDAQ, uh, 23 to 14 advancers over decliners. Um, so overall, a uh, pretty positive day. Going to the strongest sectors, well, we finally got the uh, tech, the tech group, or groups, I should say, uh, finally getting up off the basement. I'll switch on over here, uh, semiconductor, semiconductor ETF, which was really, really had been taking it on the chin here over the last uh, several, several days, um, jumping up 6%, switch on over to the chart here, jumping up 6% on the day, uh, but getting off that level, uh, it seemed as though some of these other tech groups uh, had really just been getting crushed here since uh, the second or third week of February. Uh, finally starting to see a little bit of life. Same with the biotech. Biotech coming up off that 200-day moving average. That was up 4.5% today. But the NYSC Technology Spider up 5.4%. Software and services. Uh, software and services getting up about 4.5% also. Uh, getting right back to its 50-day moving average. Internet Spider. Internet Spider, same thing, getting back to the 50. So overall, the whole tech sector pretty much led the way on the day, but that's after several days of uh, getting rocked rocked and knocked around. Now, that doesn't mean uh, it's all going to be rosy from here. You know, as we are coming and touching upon that 50-day moving average, you know, probably, you know, some good short-term exits there uh, off, off of that for you day traders uh, because... You know, still looking out here over the next several weeks doesn't mean that the you know the party's about to begin here on the tech sector. Now, on the downside, uh, you know, we're some of the ones that have been leading over the last few weeks. You know, like the energy sector, uh, we had oil and gas equipment services down 4.7 percent on the day, uh, and pretty much you know was kind of a trend down all day right from the open, as you can see here. Uh, oil and gas exploration down 2.68% on, uh, on the day. And then the banks, which were leading the way on the higher interest rates, they were all pretty weak today. Uh, regional bank re regional bank sector, spider down about 2%. Sector energy, the bank ETF down 1.5%. Uh, on the day, and then the big XLF, XLF financial sector spider down nine tenths of a percent. Uh, you know, she got up, she you know had that gap down right at the open, closed the gap, but then kind of drifted off right into the close. Pretty strong volume right there on that last candle. Okay, uh, industrials down about four tenths of a percent. So really, you know, the theme of the day was tech. You know, tech just trying to basically just kind of recover. Uh, led by the semiconductors here, as you can see. Uh, some of the other broader averages, uh, of course, you know, with tech, we're talking NASDAQ 100, pretty much looking the same. NASDAQ composite uh, up 3.6%. Uh, the New York composite, though, only about 5 tenths of a percent gain, as you can see here, pretty much uh, getting right back to where she opened at in the morning. Uh, so, you know, a little bit of a balancing out. You know, I've been talking over the last several segments about the split between value and growth. Well, that balanced out a little bit today with growth kind of kind of getting playing a little catch up uh, to a certain degree. 
uh, on the interest rate front. Uh, that's where there was a little bit of relief also here on the 10-year. 10-year getting down to 1.54 off of that 1.6 level uh, percentage rate on the 10-year treasury. So that kind of gave the, the market a little bit of relief. And then finally, uh, how about uh, how about the Dow? The Dow Industrials uh, pretty much getting right back to where she started at on the day. So basically closing flat. Uh, so industrial is pretty much a flat day. Uh, nothing to really brag about there. Okay, so uh, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's kind of go through some uh, individual individual items uh, to get here onto the alert list. And we're going to start off um, uh, with a couple of insider highlights here. I noticed uh, Penny Mac Financial. Let's get Penny Mac Financial up here first. Uh, some insider insider activity buying here on the penny mac um limited partnership uh what is their name uh director mfn partners lp uh they bought about a quarter million shares quarter million shares on the penny mac let's pull up the chart uh, Penny Mac financial year. Uh, so uh, insider activity buying at around the 60 and a half level here. That was back on. Do I have it here? I don't have the date of the purchase, but it was filed. It was filed today. Uh, quarter million shares at 60 and a half. So that was probably from the day before. Uh, the one or two days before, but Penny Mac Financial, what's the story there fundamentally? Uh, so specialty finance, financial services, only about 29 million shares in the float, uh, trading with a sick low PE of just a three, three single handle three for the PE, doing 3.7 billion in sales, uh, 1.6 billion in earnings. Uh, showing earnings per share gains over the last few quarters of triple digits, 200%, 200 plus percent last quarter, 360%, second quarter back, third quarter back, 377%. So Penny Mac Financial, specialty uh, financial services provider, um, looking pretty good fundamentally. Uh, in fact, uh, let me just kind of pull up my ranks here uh, while I show you the daily chart here let me just pull up my profile on the penny mac financial on uh, while that's populating uh, we'll just go back here on the daily from the pandemic lows back in march uh stock is up something like 400 percent 400 yeah 400 plus percent uh kind of flattening out here uh, from the highs in October and early January, right at the end of the year. Uh, but looks like we're kind of testing those levels on the upside. So anyway, uh, so, some big insider uh, purchases going on there with Penny Mac Financial. And I'll come back to the chart. Should have been showing the chart when I mentioned that. So again, I'll just say from the pandemic lows, from the pandemic lows, about a 4 Four five hundred percent gain uh, over the last year, and here's the action here on the last few days, coming up and testing the higher end of the range on Penny Mac Financial. Okay, moving on, moving on. Uh, another insider highlight uh, is this OPK Opco Health OPK OPK. Uh, so insider buying into this uh, chairman of the board CEO uh, Frost Philip uh, he bought about 300,000 shares uh, at 391 391 uh, so basically he threw about 11 million at that 11 million okay uh, into that insider purchase uh, so low price stock, 452, company pretty decent financials also, uh, fundamentally. Opco Health has uh, basically about $1.4 in revenue, $30 million in earnings. Um, total income over the last uh, year, 
uh, showing about 109% increase on their earnings per share. Last quarter, up 127% on the earnings. Second quarter back, 136%, 150% back on that. I mean, just uh, looking good fundamentally. Uh, so I guess no real surprise. Uh, we're getting a little insider buying in at this level after that sell-off that you see happening here from late January, early February coming down from the six level getting all the way down to four so once it got to that 200 day moving average that looked like a good level to get in and that's exactly what the chairman of the board did here okay so that stock uh, had a good day today up about 3.9 percent uh, always good to see insiders uh, jumping in on their stock when they see a little pullback like that all right uh, how about on the earnings front next up? Next up on the earnings front, we've got uh, Regulus Therapeutics. Uh, stock with a pretty decent timeliness rank uh, on my ranks. RGLS is the symbol. Uh, Regulus Therapeutics. Um, there's part of the reason why my timeliness ranks look good. A little bit of a sell-off getting down to the 200-day moving average at a dollar a share up seven percent today to a dollar 37 so last three days a uh, nice 37 percent move um improvement going on there uh, fundamentally the company doesn't have a lot of sales or earnings to speak of sales of five million losing about 20 million so biotech play probably in the clinical stage uh, of development but last quarter earnings over the last two three quarters showing double digit gains and improvements uh, for Regulus uh, so earnings beat there was uh, they came in with a three cent loss versus the 10 cent loss estimate so about 70 percent uh, up over the estimate for Regulus Therapeutics I uh, don't really know the whole story there fundamentally what uh, ther therapies they're involved in I'm just gonna kinda skip through it just wanted to mention the the earnings headline uh, for that today uh, moving on next, uh, how about an analyst upgrade? Let's go to Neophotonics. Neophotonics, I like that name. NPTN. Uh, that had a analyst, D.A. Davidson, uh, raising that from a neutral to a buy with a price target of 15. So that stock had a pretty decent day, up about 12%. Uh, and basically the call is for it to get right back up to those highs so after that sell-off analysts coming in with an upgrade ba based on these levels probably most mostly for valuation purposes uh, companies got sales 371 million losing about 4 million on the bottom line uh, but over the last year about a 72 percent increase year over year on the earnings per share only about 40 million shares in the float for a New York listed company, so fairly small float. Uh, Neo Photonics. Uh, let me just kind of see what they're involved in real quick. Neo Photonics. Let me pull up the profile on that here. Uh, based in San Jose, semiconductor maker. I'm going to guess solar. No, let me see. They sell opto opto electronic products that transmit and receive high speed digital optical signals for the cloud and hyperscale data center, serving internet content providers and telecom networks worldwide. So anyway, uh, analysts coming in with the upgrade on Neo Photonics uh, with a price target about 50% higher than where she is from right here. That's the D.A. Davidson analyst. Next up, next up, what are we going to look at next up? Let's see, maybe I should flip to this look here so I can get some profile data in here. Do I want to move to this look? Nah. Yeah, we'll do it for a few minutes. Um, next on the list, Zynex. How about Zynex? symbol ZYXI uh, here today moving up 8% on the day a Northland capital analyst raised it from market perform to outperform with a price target of 22 and a half so he sees new highs he sees 
that about 25 percent higher uh, from where she's at right here and then you can see a nice uh, jump off that baseline uh, that pretty much formed in that october to november period uh, yeah see i like this this is the better look here um so uh this is the baseline uh she jumped off that so that was your support level pretty much the s3 pivot level uh so over the last four days a uh, pretty decent gain percentage gain going on there off the lows for zynex getting the bullish call from the northland capital analyst with the 22 and a half dollar price target Uh, next up, how about on the downgrade, the downgrade list? Um, Evotech AG, Euro European company, EVTC, Evertech. Uh, Evertech story here, Morgan Stanley analyst. Uh, raising, uh, excuse me, downgrading it from equal weight to underweight. Price target of 34, so only a couple dollars lower from here. He sees it basically getting back to that support level that you see set back late January, uh, late October. Uh, so basically the downgrade coming out of Morgan Stanley analysts there. Uh, they reported earnings about a week and a half back. Uh, 58 cents versus the 55 cent estimate, about a 7% gain over estimates. Doing about 500 a million, 500 million in revenue, 104 million in earnings. Uh, pretty decent margins going on there. Trading about 27 times earnings, uh, but I guess he just felt it's a little pricey there. Uh, there in the technology, software, software infrastructure. Um, so that's the story there with Evertech. Uh, next up, let's get into some of the movers list on the day. Uh, here's a little cheap stock, a little cheap uh, Sit Sitnex Technologies, symbol S-I-N-T. This was a percent mover on the day of 58%. Uh, let me see what I got going on here fundamentally. Uh, medical device maker, healthcare sectors, 22 million shares in the float. Uh, a little bit held by insiders and institutions, trading about 32 times earnings. Uh, just under a million in sales, losing about six million uh, over the last year. wasn't that great of an increase, but last quarter they came in about eighty-five percent increase on their earnings per share. Uh, so a bit of a uh, fundamental picture improving over the last three quarters. Eighty-five percent last quarter, seventy-seven percent two quarters back, three quarters back, thirty-one percent. So kind of improving a little bit there. Anyway, stock jumping up 58% today. Must have been some news. Let's see what kind of news we got going on there. Syntex, Syntex, Syntex expects anti, antiviral fabrics to be used in many applications. So uh, face mask maker, it looks like, making face masks. And they announced a fabric technology shown to inactivate upon contact COVID. Okay, so they basically came out with news about their face mask uh, looking good for uh, protection on COVID. And they submitted a master access file to the FDA for their composite material. So essentially a face mask maker. Cheap stock. Having a nice move today. That's why it got up on the percentage list. It's uh, basically a, a device device um, announcement pushing that higher. I'm going to go back a little more in time here on the headlines. I see here uh, company... Uh, company entered into a commercialization agreement to fight COVID-19 with a company called O2 Today. So that's interesting. It's probably the only um, face mask centric uh, type of stock I've seen here in a while um, on this whole COVID play. Uh, so some interesting things happen in there. Go take a look at it. S-I-N-T. You know, do your homework. Yeah. 
All right, so let's move on. Let's move on to, uh, let's see, Oris Medical Holdings Ears. This is a symbol with a 52% gain on the day. Uh, ears. E-A-R-S. Up 52% to 520. And that's after that big move back in December. Uh, healthcare, biotech play. Looks like our clinical stage. I see no revenue. Um, not much to talk about here on the earnings front, so there was probably news here today. Let's just kind of check the wires. Check the wires, see what her story was on the day. Uh, it was halted due to volatility. They announced. I don't really see any news here. Back in January, though, uh, they announced the initiation of a clinical uh, investigation of AM301, their product in aller allergic uh, rhinitis. So kind of a single single product kind of indication, uh, biotech play. Anyway, uh, catching a bid today with a 52% gain up to 520. I see nothing else. I see no analyst coverage, nothing here. On ears just a top 20% mover top 20 top 20 percent mover on the day oh look at that look who got into the list again GameStop <laughs> this is just sick 26% gain to 246 today <laughs> on your GameStop again I'm gonna repeat myself my analysis on this is one word. Why? I mean, 246 Jumping from $50 six days ago. I mean, look at the range from 50 to 400 Back down to 50 Back up to 150 Now catching a bit again, jumping another $150 last few days. I mean, it's just, it's out of control. It's out of control. I mean, again, if you want to speculate, you want to gamble, you want to just deal with the high volatility, I guess have at it. But um, I have to admit, not for me. Not for me. I just can't see myself. Would I buy one share of it in my Robinhood account just to play around with it? Which I guess why not, but probably not also. You know, I just uh, uh, just can't get behind the story. I mean, they had $5 billion in sales. Great. Losing about $300 million. Will there be a comeback in gaming on the retail front? Yeah, sure. I mean, why not? But does it really justify these valuations? I don't know. I don't know. But, hey, it's, you know, it's just, you know, for some of it, you know, to each his own. But anyway, getting on the list, getting on the, the dollar mover, dollar mover list on the day. The dollar movers, top twenty dollar movers. Moving on, moving on. How about Lamb Research? Let's get to Lamb Research. LRCX Tech Play, probably looking pretty good today. Jumping up eight percent. Yeah, getting up, get, getting up off a little support level there. Getting up off a little support level there, right at that five fourteen level, five fourteen level roughly. Uh, right out of the gate, right from the open. Uh, let's see what we got for news going on. Lamb Research. Uh, CEO surrendering 176 shares. Okay, okay that's really nothing. Uh, um, what is the news here? Looks like she's just uh, catching the tailwind of uh, just a good tech day. Just a good tech day. Looks like there was one article on Seeking Alpha on it. Um, headline was AI, Internet of Things, 5G, and Gaming Tailwinds. I'm not even going to read the article right now. Anyway, just a little highlight there. Stock up 8% on the day. Coming up off of... All level, she bounced off that 50-day moving average. That's really about, 
the only thing worth mentioning there for lamb research expensive stock five hundred dollars a share uh doing 11.9 billion in revenue three billion on the bottom line so nice profitability they pay a dividend two percent 2.07 percent earnings per share look good over the last three quarters 73 percent last quarter 80 percent increase second quarterback third quarterback 34 percent even the sales growth rate looks good 24 percent revenue growth year over year so fundamentally all the right stuff there so sure she has a pretty high ranking on my fundies let me just see let me pull up the profile and just for the heck of it let's go to that profile look while she populates isn't that ugly I got all kinds of stuff mixing in there but anyway yeah look at that looking good on the fundamentals nice steady increase going on there here let's kind of zoom in on that let's zoom in on that nice increase there going quarter over quarter there on the revenue and the earnings um I'll switch on over to my ranks. How about the ranks? What are the ranks looking like? Yeah, look at that. 92 on the overall rank. 95 fundamental rank. Power rank, 88. Timeliness time when rank's about 57. Uh, so nothing really great there. But hey, who cares? You know, fundamentally, the stock's strong. A lot of good fundamentals going in. Their highest price target is 670 on the street. That's out of 17 analysts. The mean is 537, which is pretty much where we're at right now. But the high price target of 670 is out there. Uh, so that's definitely worth mentioning. Let me go to the percentage gains here. Why is it not showing here? What am I doing wrong? Okay, so let's switch to this. Will this bring it up? There we go. There we go. So revenue quarter over quarter, year over year, numbers there, revenue and earnings. So nice double dig digit percent gains that you see going on there. Okay. Let's on flip on back to the full chart. Okay, so that's Lamb Research comments. Now, here's one of my favorites coming up next. Uh, top, top $20 movers up, NVIDIA. NVIDIA getting up to 500 dollars and 81 cents coming up off the basement there is nvidia after probably a real hammering here on the daily yeah she's coming down from the 610 level getting all the way down to 470 in just a matter of about two weeks time so no surprise there she is bouncing off that little support level there around that 480 level I mean, NVIDIA, just pretty much uh, a benchmark for semiconductors, GPUs, <clears throat> and the like, you know, into Bitcoin mining, data centers, uh, just all kinds of good things going on there. Fundamentally, everything's good there also. $16.7 in revenue with about a 20, excuse me, 52% gain on revenue year over year, you know, at $16.7 all right? I mean, just firing on all cylinders. Fundamentally, is NVIDIA. Great stock. Uh, just been a, a kick-ass performer over the last several, you know, two, three years here, as you see. Getting up almost four or 500%. So she had a little bit of a correction. You know, big deal. Got to the 200-day moving average. That's a good level. That's a good level to get in on the NVIDIA. I love the stock. I love the stock. I don't have it right now. I, I had it a long time ago. Um, but I just, uh, you know, I got to admire everything that's going on there. Fundamentally, this is an investment. A pure play investment in a company that's pretty much leading in their industry is NVIDIA. So it's worthy. It's worthy for everybody. It's worthy for the, the day traders, the swing traders. You know, take your pick. Okay, there's always good levels to find on a stock like this, you know, for you Robin Hooders, you know, so what, it's $500 a share, you can get fractional shares of it now, nothing wrong with that. So, NVIDIA, NVIDIA, okay, next up, we're going to talk about some movers down, 
We want to talk about some down movers today. Yeah, why not? Let's move up here with AutoZone. Yeah, skip it, AutoZone. Forget AutoZone. AutoZone was down. How about... Uh, what do I see? Let me just pick something out here. Bear with me for a second here. Yeah, why be Debbie Downer? Let's not talk about some of these stocks that are down on the day. Even though they might be good trade opportunities, I'm not going to... I'm not going to finish out with this. I'm going to be on the positive kick. So next up, we're going to start talking about some stocks that are streaking, streaking up and leading the streak list. In fact, I'm going to switch on over here to show this view real quick on my group profile. So here's your top stocks streaking up here. And I always describe the CSTR. That's the number of days of the streak. The percentage gain on the streak and the VCR is the volume confirmation rank on today's action or the the most recent action I put that in there because you know when I'm looking at some of these streaking stocks you know trying to decide whether I'm going to get in them or not I want to have uh, a nice volume confirmation rank, so I got a percentile formulation going on there on increase of volume, increase and decrease on volume to kind of see if it was confirming on the last day of the streak. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's talk about a few of them. Let's switch on back to the alerts. What are we doing first? We're going to do first Western Financial. First Western Financial at 22. Why am I doing this one first? Well, mainly because of the power rank. My power rank, VCR rank, is in the 90th percentile. And uh, we'll take a look here. MYFW. MYFW on the chart. Move on over. Moving on up. We're moving on up. Up. From the $18 level up to 22 taking out new highs here on the daily First Western Financial. Uh, now, as you see here, uh, that's what my streak list is all about. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven days up. Seven days up in a row with volume coming in behind it. That's what I like to see when I see these streakers. I want to make sure we got the volume behind it. Anyway, First Western Financial, uh, Regional Bank. Uh, about 85 million in sales, 22 million in earnings, uh, year over year, 200% increase on their earnings. Last quarter, 300% increase on the earnings per share. Um, you know, beneficiary of the higher interest rate move and trend that we got going on right now. So no, no surprise. Uh, here's a regional bank touching on new highs. So that's one of the, one of the ones topping out on the streak list. Uh, next one, pr going to probably be pretty much the same story, Capital Bank Corp. Uh, Capital Bank Corp is... <laughs> populating. She's coming, Captain. I'm giving her all she's got. CBNK. Capital Bank Corp. So there you go. Nice streak going on there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, Capital Bank Core eight day streak, twenty six percent gain in that streak. Uh, that's topping out my streak list right now, and I see a lot of volume, a lot of volume coming in there, increasing volume too. You know, always good to see that. So another financial benefiting from the trend and strength in financials, and that's that's despite again financials being down on the day. You know, um, I was showing you earlier the Spider, Spider Financial and Bank Sector ETF saw pretty much down on the day. Well, Capital Bank Corp, she pushed higher today. Uh, let me see if there was any news, just in case. Let's see if there was any news on her today. Mm. Ah, just some insider selling. So a few insiders selling into the strength. I guess that's understandable. Anyway, Capital Bank Corp. That was next on the list. Uh, let's move on to LGI Homes. 
on the streak list. LGI Homes, LGIH. So what do we got here? Residential construction, home builder. 2.4 billion in revenue, earning about 320 million. Got some solid fundamentals going on with this sucker. Only eight for a PE. Nice low PE too on LGI Homes. And that's despite year over year earnings per share gain of 82%, year over year revenue gain of 28%. Uh, so a strong home builder. I'm sure she's going to look good on the chart going out a year. Yep, right into the peak of the pandemic, she was climbing. And then pretty much based out, based out from July all the way here up until February. And she's just finally starting to break out now is LGI Homes. So from a valuation standpoint, that one looks good um, and definitely fundamentally strong, strong, good volume coming in on that too. So LGI Homes uh, looking good, looking good pretty much on the daily. Uh, so how about this one? How about this? Uh, this next one, Calmaine Foods. Calmain Foods. Let me pull that up. That's on the streak list. So this is going to be somewhat of a consumer defensive play, right? Calmain Foods. Uh, C A L M. Stay calm. Stay calm is the symbol. Uh, not nice little streak going on there. Uh, with pretty strong volume coming behind it, kind of breaking out of a range that she was pretty much stuck in uh, from September to February. Trading between, you know, about a 10%, 10, 15% range she was stuck in. Well, now she's finally starting to catch a bid. She does about $1.4 in revenue, $67 million in earnings. Uh, last year, 280% increase on the earnings per share. Last quarter, 219% increase. About 80% held by institutions, 22% by insiders. Uh, so good defensive farm product, stock, food maker, food producer. Uh, kind of getting up off the basement there and in a current streak as we speak. Calmaine Foods. Okay, next up. Next up, how about Assurance? Assurance on the streak list. Another financial services provider. Uh, I guess insurance, right? Insurance, AIZ, uh, specialty insurance. Uh, nothing to really brag about there. Pretty steady fundamentals going on. Paying about a 2% yield. Um, earnings per share gains over the last two, three quarters in the double digits, 19, 12, and 39% uh, respectively. Uh, trading about 19 times earnings. Uh, they announced uh, today they're divesting their funeral insurance business for about $1.3 billion. So uh, that kind of helps them, uh, on, I guess, raising some cash. So anyway, that's on the streak list. Volume coming in on it. And she's going back and testing highs. Testing highs or just about there to test some highs going back a few months. Assurance. Uh, how about Cigna? Same thing. Uh, another insurance play. Well, we got a couple more to go here uh, on the streak list, but we're going to talk about them anyway. CI Cigna. Uh, healthcare plans. Healthcare sector hitting new highs, breaking out, breaking out with a streak going on right now with some volume behind it. Um, breaking out of a pretty long term range, too. Long-term range going back over a year. Uh, finally getting out into new highs is Cigna. And Cigna fundamentally uh, looking pretty good uh, last quarter. Coming in 300 plus percent increase quarter over quarter earnings per share. Um, sales growth rate, nothing spectacular, about 5%. But I guess for a company that's doing $160 billion in revenues, what's wrong with a 5% growth rate on that? Nothing. 
Uh, earnings over the year, uh, last year, $8.5 billion in earnings. So Signal looking good. Healthcare plan provider breaking out, breaking out with a nice little streak. A uh, couple more to go here. Uh, next, uh, Glaxo, Glaxo Smith Klein. Uh, Deutsche Bank analyst uh, a couple weeks back put out a sell on that, but let's kind of see what's going on there with Glaxo. That's got a streak going on right now of about seven days, getting to the 50-day moving average with some volume. But yeah, she's been weak. She's been kind of weak across the board. Very mixed on the fundamentals uh, I'm looking at here over the last several quarters. Um, so just really kind of getting off support levels is, a, I guess, all, what I can say here. That support level set back in November. So that w that's kind of what we see going on there. Nothing spectacular on a percentage basis, uh, but does have a nice seven-day streak going on, Glaxo Smith Klein. And in that seven days, it is up uh, 4.4%. So nothing. It's nothing. Nothing to brag about there. Uh, and then finally, on the streak list that we're going to highlight, how about level one? Level one bank corp again, another financial. Uh, LEVL is the symbol. Uh, company uh, trading about seven times earnings, very low PE, paying a little dividend, just under 1%, eight tenths of a percent, doing 75 million in sales, earning 16 million, breaking out into new highs with a three, four, five, six, seven day streak going on there. Uh, looks like she might be running out of gas here on some volume. Uh, but that's the last one uh, I'm going to highlight here from the streak list, Level 1 Bank Corp. But here, just for you folks that might want to freeze the screen here, I'll just move you on over so you can just kind of see who's topping out on the streak list. Take your screenshot, just freeze the video, do what you want. And uh, I guess I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, just want to do a little post-market summary. So, like I said, markets are uh, uh, playing a little catch-up on the tech side of things. Uh, most of the benchmarks, um, pretty much, you know, tenth, five tenths of a percent gain. S and P doing one one point four percent on the day, but things kind of balancing out. It's really the story today was tech. Story today was tech basically catching up uh, after falling pretty hard here over the last couple of weeks. <clears throat> And as I do this, I'm looking at futures, um, pretty much the flat line, down slightly. Not a lot not a lot to say there. Let's pull up the futures board. Uh, anyway, uh, as I record this, it's about 11 o'clock at night. Um, but as you can see, uh, getting up off the lows for the major benchmarks, trying to fight back for the flat line. Uh, so not much going on there. Not much on the interest rate front, too. Uh, tomorrow, we do have some high-impact numbers coming out tomorrow. CPI data in the U.S., uh, so that might shake some things up. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I'll see you on the next episode. See you in the pre-market uh, around 8, 830. Uh, we'll get out there and we'll kind of take a look at uh, what to look for for tomorrow's trading session on Wednesday. So other than that, I will see you on the next episode.